Hello, welcome to Find Your Feet. No one has arrived yet. I wanted to do a little intro for those of you attending the recording. Um, Kira, I know you're there. You have received or are receiving guidance. Wow, I can really feel your energy actually. <laughs> From the singer of initiation. No wonder your eyes are wonky. You're passing through a black hole. And I'm not sure who else is going to be attending the recording, but um, I have, let's see, burning in my little cauldron. I have made an incense cocktail at my little apothecary in my dining room um, of, ooh, this is really hot. I don't know if you can see the smoke. It's mugwort, patchouli, balsam, pine, a little bit of rosemary, and a little bit of mullion. I put mullion in there because um, I like to include it in all of my homemade incense blends because it helps to clear the airways. And I've been experiencing, I don't know if it's asthma, but definitely breathing issues for the last while. So um, a couple of years or so, um, maybe my whole life it's possible. It could be asthma. So um, that's what I have. And then for tea, I have in this really um, of the time mug from Balmoral. I have um, from the new, new age, it's called Tea of Peace and it is pine needles and reishi mushrooms. So I believe it's reishi mushrooms. And then I also have a, I have water and then I have a green smoothie. <laughs> so these are all tools that I'm using to ground. I have the shaman's oracle cards here for grounding, additional grounding. And yeah, I'm all ready to go. For some reason, I feel like everyone is attending the recording, but I'll give it a few more minutes. <laughs> it's weird to sit here by yourself and pretend that you're talking to someone. Um, although I do feel your energies actually, and that can be quite powerful. So I put the incense, I guess, while we're talking, this is also very grounding using the mortar, mortar and pestle just feels like there's something so meditative about it. I wish you could smell this. Oh, it smells so yummy. I always make too much. There's a lot here. If you ever want me to send any, let me know. It's just Canadian shipping costs. <laughs> They're kind of crazy. And I just burn it on a charcoal, char, charcoal, pardon me, in my cauldron. Let's talk about other ways of grounding. So reading a book. But really the theme of this practice is beyond simply grounding is finding your feet. So finding stability. And that isn't always a matter of root chakra and grounding. Sometimes that's finding stability in while you're floating downstream or while you're flying or while you're burning, <laughs> you know, there's, um, I 
finding your feet when there is no other stability to be had. And this ties into radical self-reliance and the idea that we have to find, you know, anchor in ourselves, which is not to say that I don't believe in interdependence, I certainly do. I think that we can be extremely helpful to one another in that way. Okay, Jennifer and Nikki. Jennifer, you are guided by Ilvi the Retriever. And Ilvi talks about things that you've lost hope in, that the, that hope isn't lost, that you can still recover those things. There's a feeling, there's a, there's a feeling of um, uh, home or a feeling of stab stability that feels like maybe it'll never happen again. I'm getting kind of like the feeling of going to a grandparent's house that like, maybe that was something you wanted to reproduce in your life and it never really worked or happened and, um, or it hasn't yet, but it, it can and it will, and whatever else um, speaks to you in that one, that way. And, Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm just <laughs> recording, Jennifer. I just um, recorded. I wasn't sure if you were coming because of the time and everything. Um, so I'll send out the video. I did like a little, I talked to you about the card I pulled for you. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. You got Ilby the Retriever, and he is the Retriever of Lost Hope. Oh no. So a really no no it's a good thing. It's something oh, that it you is? thought that wasn't possible is possible. Oh. And I was just about I've been sitting on the camera just talking to to no one because I wasn't sure if anyone was going to come to the live. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I mean it's um this is actually a good time for me because it's like I get off at 4 and so I can when you changed everything from 7 to 8 at your time I actually can make it at five. Oh, so it's actually a really good. So if, you know, if you want to record it and, you know, and you don't have to do it live just for me, I feel bad if I'm the only one here. Oh, no, you're not the only one. We have okay. Alta here as well. Hi, Alta. Okay. <laughs> nice to see you. And I have a card yeah. for you. This little guy, Indy. Oh. Indy doesn't yeah. know. Indy's confused. Yeah. <laughs> and a little bit tense about it and maybe wants to cry sometimes. Oh no. <laughs> so I have some incense that I blended. I've already talked about this on the recording, but I'll tell you guys, I blended some incense of my own in this mortar and pestle because this is a very grounding and stabilizing exercise for me to work with plants and to, to press them down with a, a stone. Um, and I have mugwort, mullein, um, patchouli, a little bit of rosemary, some balsam and some pine. And a few of those things I gathered myself. Patchouli, unfortunately, I cannot gather here because it is a southern hemisphere <laughs> type of plant. But so I have that burning, and then I'm drinking New New Ages Tea of Peace, which is just um, pine and reishi mushroom. So it's oh nice wow, 
nicely oh, wow. grounding. Yeah, it's it's really lovely. Who knew pine was something you could drink? I didn't. I where, what is it called? I might want to try and get some. I will message you the, okay. the link. Yeah, okay, I will cool. message you the link for sure. So um, finding your feet, this is the theme. So it's not just grounding, it's about finding stability in yourself and in whatever situation you find yourself in. So like, um, that anchor or that, that there's, there's like a quote that's attributed to Dolly Parton and I'm not sure if it is to do with her and I'm going to but butcher it because I don't remember it verbatim, but it's something to do <laughs> something with the effect of like, when your roots are deep, you don't have to fear the storm. I'm sure people have heard things like that. So um, it's kind of like that. That's that's the aim. And I just want us to explore our feet, honestly, in our practice. Um, this is something that we don't really do a ton of online because I don't know, it's um, in a room, you tend to feel okay to like kind of break things down and stop things and just kind of go, okay, let's explore our feet. But in an online yoga class, it tends to kind of just, um, it falls by the wayside. Um, and so I thought that it would be good for all of us. I think everyone that's attending practices semi-regularly, if not regularly, um, for all of us to connect in with our feet and to find that in the practice. And then of course, we'll, we will go into a, a bit of a meditation and hopefully you will feel nice and refreshed and also kind of solid um, through this practice. So we are going to start in a seated meditation. Um, our beautiful seated meditation with hips raised and um, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm awkwardly shuffling from side to side <laughs> with hips raised and your feet um, in front of you, heels aligned or coming into a lotus pose if that's available to you. And I'm going to mute you guys and then move back to my mat. So please let me know, is the music in the background um, making the audio shoddy or can you hear me well enough? Good, okay. If I don't hear anything, I assume that. Good. All right. So I have a meditation pillow. You can also use a bolster, a pile of blankets, pillows to really elevate the hips. If you're coming into a lotus that's bringing one foot onto the opposite leg and then the other foot, I can't do full lotus, so I can't demonstrate, but you can certainly do half lotus as well, or bring the heels in line with one another. And from here, stacking, the ribs over the hips, the shoulders over the ribs. And maybe moving the head from side to side. Let's just find some gentle movements. And because this is an evening practice, this is more about just checking in with your. Checking in with where you're at in your neck and from your day. Maybe you held an awkward position in front of your computer today and you're feeling that in the neck. So just small movements. We're not trying to hit and move any points just yet. And maybe turn the head from side to side, looking from shoulder to shoulder. 
finding your range of motion, I think is the best way to put it. And when you're ready, finding stillness in the neck, if that's not yet, that's okay. Eventually, we will find that stillness. And begin to peacefully draw our awareness into center. And become aware of the space between your eyebrows, of the tip of your nose, of your cupid's bow, your chin. the front of your neck, the chest bone, each rib, your belly button, the space between the hips, all the way down to your roof. And feel it ground down the front body, this line from third eye to root. And bringing our awareness up to the crown of your head, and down the back of your skull, the back of your neck the space between the shoulders, moving your awareness down your spine, behind the ribs, behind the belly, behind the hips, all the way down to the tailbone, feeling it anchor. And now coming down from the crown to the ear, the sides of the neck on the right side and the left, the right shoulder, the left shoulder, right elbow, left elbow, right wrist, left down each fingertip, thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. Fully grounded, fully relaxed. And bring your hands out to your sides, fingertips to the earth. Extend that feeling down into the earth from each fingertip, thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger all those little roots reaching down. And a current of earth energy rises up through your fingertips to those roots that like nerves feel the subtle energies of the earth. And this current then the line up the front body and down the back body. 
Lower the arms and back into the earth. Up the front body, down the back body. Lower the arms and back into the earth. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder and place your right hand gently on your head, keeping the left fingertips rooted. Breathe into the neck. Gently release the right fingertips to the earth, put the head back to center, left ear to left shoulder, left hand to the head. And this is not to press your head into the stretch, but just to rest the hand there, deepening the stretch, breathing into the shoulder and neck, keeping the right fingertips rooted. And release. Switch the cross of your feet and back to rooting. This time, bringing your awareness to your hips. All fingertips are grounded on the earth. Shoulders roll down the back, crown of the head lifts, all spine. And we begin to feel a shift in the legs as the legs become rooted. First, down the front leg, from the hips, across the tops of the thighs and the tops of the knees, the shins, the tops of the feet, and each toe, big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and pinky toe. Down one side and down the other side, knee, shin, top of foot, big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and pinky toe. And then from the back of the hips down the foot, the hamstring. The back of the knee, the calf muscle, the ankle, the heel, and the sole of the feet on one side. Moving your awareness to the other side, down the glute, hamstring, back of the knee, calves, heel, sole of the foot. Anchoring down now, feeling that stability. If you feel a pulsing coming from your center, a swaying, go with it. Allow your body to pulse. stability, to trust in ourselves, through radical self-responsibility, grounding,
if at any time during this practice I say I am, feel free to repeat after me if it resonates for you. Let's start to connect with our feet by bringing the soles of the feet together. Outside edges of the feet are touching, knees are wide. If you need support, use support. You can walk your sits bones off the edge of wherever you are sitting and come onto the earth or keep that support underneath the hips. Bring your thumbs to the insides of the arches of the feet and begin to draw circles, massaging the feet. Massaging this space. Keep your eyes closed and move intuitively. And one of the neat little things about massaging your feet before a practice is that it actually helps to relax the rest of the fascia in the body. So you can Find yourself going deeper into your stretches or finding more ease. Begin to move these circles up toward the big toe. Moving your big toes in circles. So if it doesn't feel coordinated to do both of them at the same time, time, feel free to do one and then the other. We're just finding movement, moving that big toe in circles. Or maybe there is another form of massage that you, or movement that you would like to find in that big toe. And then moving to the second toe. I'm realizing that I probably should have advertised that you should come with clean feet. <laughs> but if not, we're embracing where we're at today. We're embracing these feet, these glorious little dirty toes, if that's what we have. <laughs> moving on to the second toe, drawing circles with them here. And obviously to reach our feet, we may sacrifice a little bit in the straightness of our backs, but try to keep a straight back, try to keep the shoulders drawing down the back as we move that second toe, maybe drawing circles along the side. And then moving on to the next when you're ready. Noticing, massaging the spaces between the toes. And maybe this has never been done before. <laughs> and Notice how it feels or what comes up for you here. If you never give your feet attention, maybe you're noticing why. When you're already moving on to the next toe, taking your time. Drawing circles. And if you practice with me, particularly the solar practice, we do a foot stretch that can be really intense for the toes. So it'll be really fun and interesting to see how that actually feels after doing this. It may not feel as bad. <laughs> Drawing circles, and then we move on to the pinky toe when we're ready. Mm -hmm. 
what attention can you give this child? What movement can you look at? Maybe for the first time you're connecting with the, the bones in your feet, noticing how they move, the little joints. So when we're done with that, taking a moment to pause and bring the toes as far apart as you can, keeping the heels together, knees out wide. Sitting up nice and tall. And then rolling the feet together, bring the toes together, bring the heels out wide, pressing all the toes together. All spine. And bring the knees in nice and close. Hug yourself, bring your forehead to your knees. Make yourself into a little ball. Tucking the chin in toward the chest, breathe into the back of the neck. Roll back up, extend the right leg out long, point and flex the feet. Now there is a, an additional aspect to this if you want it. You can lift your leg just slightly up off the floor and point and flex in this way. This is going to require lower abdominal um, strength. And if it doesn't feel right, don't worry about it. Keep your spine long. So try not to um, compensate by leaning back to keep the leg lifted. Point and flex the feet. You have 10 more of these. And three. Two and one, lowering your leg to the earth if it isn't there already. Right foot to the ground, left leg out long, and we begin to point and flex the foot. Again, you can hover your leg up off the earth. It doesn't have to be high. Pointing and flexing, reaching out through the heel, pointing the toe. We have 10 more. Keep your spine long. And two, and one. Bring your left foot to meet the right. Knees out wide. Walk your hands forward, pull over the leg. So maybe this looks like seated as well, that's okay. And walk your hands over toward one knee, come over onto hands and knees. Tuck the toes under and begin to walk your hands back towards your feet. So this is a stretch that I include in most of my practices. This is the one I was talking about where you really feel that stretch in your toes. If your hands are forward still to support you, that is completely all right. If you feel a lot of discomfort, maybe just coming up onto the knees for a moment and then sitting back down again. And to keep our minds off of what is going on in the feet, let's interlace the fingers behind the back. Open the shoulders, open the chest. And breathe in deeply. 
So if you have curly little pinky toes, you've uncurled those toes and you stand them on the earth so that they are included in this stretch. Nice, beautiful, deep breaths. Two more rounds of breath. Release your hands to the earth. We'll come to the tops of the feet. And then tap the tops of your feet on the earth. I have a very hollow, loud floor with neighbors underneath, so I'm not going to tap as loud or as hard as I would if I didn't. But it's one foot after the other. Tap, 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 tap. Keep tapping. Keep tapping. Tap, 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 and release. Let's walk the fingertips back all the way back. Lift the knees up off the floor. So now you're feeling this stretch at the top of the foot. And we're holding here. So one thing to notice if your feet are crooked, so i.e. if you're um, naturally sort of pigeon toed, maybe straightening out the feet. Find your breath. You can also bring something underneath the knees to help support you. We're staying here for a few more rounds. Lift the belly, lengthen the neck, and find your breath. And slowly begin to release the knees to the floor. I didn't release them slowly at all. Come back into the table. Tuck the toes under. Walk the hands back. We're doing this again. Uncurl the pinky toes. Lift and lengthen through the crown of the head. And release your fingers behind your back. Breathe in. Open. Draw those hands down, the shoulder blades apart. So you draw them together and then you draw them apart. And you'll feel that opening across the chest wall. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Relax the jaw. And begin to release. Walk yourself forward again, tapping the tops of the feet on the earth. I wish I could do full tap. <laughs> tap, 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 stimulating the system, off the system, tap, 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 tap. Keep going. And then press the tops of the feet on the earth. Lift the knees up off the floor. Reach out to the crown of the head. Make space between the shoulder blades. Holding here. Long neck. Try not to collapse in. Pull the belly button up toward the spine. And release the knees. Sink the hips back. This is giving our wrists a rest. We're going to turn the palms up toward the sky and come into a makeshift child's pose. We're not going to bring the knees out wide. We're going to keep the knees together and just relax over. So if your forehead doesn't touch the earth, not to worry. We're just using this to release the wrist and focus on the breath. Hmm. Maybe you wiggle the fingers. And then turn the palms down toward the floor. Come back up into that table position. We tuck the toes under and lift the knees up off the floor. Just slightly. 
just an inch or so. Reach out through the crown of the head, space between the shoulder blades, holding here, drawing the belly button up and in. Finding stability up through the fingertips, up through the toes. Deep breathing. Drop the knees, sink the hips back toward the heels, keeping the toes tucked under, and then bring your palms up toward the sky. So we're taking kind of a child's pose, um, kind of not. I'm uncurling the toes here. Releasing over the knees, holding over the knees. Turn your palms down toward the floor. Walk your hands back towards your knees and then come up onto the toes. So for this, you may want a block or um, some books or something. I'm gonna grab my block to demo. For balance, primarily. So we're up on the toes and we start to move through the feet and it's this twisting motion. I don't know if you can see it. But we just start to twist the left toes out toward the side and then the right toes out toward the side and you'll feel it's <laughs> kind of like turning a dial with your the center of your I'm forgetting the name, isn't terrible for a class to do with feet. The, not the heel, the pad, <laughs> the space below the toes. That's the place where you're feeling this twisting sensation happen. And let's start to take the right foot out wide or out far, out far. <laughs> Killing it today. I can't see when you write in the chat because I'm too far away, but thank you. I'm assuming it's Ulta. <laughs> the the ball of your foot. Out. What's that? The ball of your foot. Thank you, the ball of my foot. <laughs> thank you, Ulta. Everyone, thanks you. All right, so we're extending the right leg out long. And pointing and flexing the foot. So rolling back on the heel and then pointing the toe. If this is not available in the crouching position, you can come up and just do this drop the toe, lift the toe, um, use a block and do it this way, but you want the moving sensation through the right foot from heel to toe. Okay. So we have three more, three, two, and one. Draw the right foot back in and continue that twisting in the feet. So if you were standing, it would be kind of like doing the, um, look at this fancy dance move, doing the twist on your feet, coming up onto the ball of your feet, and then twisting from side to side, or like you're opening a jar with your foot. This class is not going to be deep and spiritual. It's going to be a bunch of weird rambling, apparently. It'll feel really good after, though. Trust me. All right, so we're down there. We're up there, making our modification. And then send the left leg out long. And again, you can use a block here for balance, um, because ideally, we want a nice long spine. Point and flex the foot. 
And through this class, you'll start to see the, the ripple effects of the feet through the body, how the position of our feet changes every single one of our stretches. So for instance, a lot of times in yoga, we cue turning the, the toes back toward you, but sometimes the, the juicy stretch is the toes pointed. So this is where we get to know and trust ourselves, our own taking this, <laughs> that self-responsibility. What I have released from my feet is a ramble monster. <laughs> All right, we have three more. And one, bring it back into center. Move through the feet, especially that right foot will be ready to do the twisting. And then we're going to walk the big toe and the heel together or the sort of <laughs> just below the big toes and the heels come together. Knees out wide again, maybe you're using something for balance here. I feel like that's what I need today. Lengthening the spine, maybe you come into full balance, both hands at heart center. Breathe. All right, and maybe you can do this with balance, just come straight up or you use your hands, toes and heels together and begin to rock through the feet in your forward fold. Use props when needed. Another option here would be to have like the a chair in front of you for balance. Just make sure that wherever you're at, your spine is long. So rolling from toe to heel on the feet. And then we'll start to turn the big toes out. Return the feet out and roll through the feet. Feel the toe. And take this slow at first because we are going to end up finding parts of our legs that maybe we never discovered before. <laughs> so we want to take it nice and easy, rolling from here to toe with the toes turned out. And then turn the toes in, bring the heels out. So this is a quasi pigeon toe, I suppose, position. Heel to toe, rolling through the feet. Again, take it easy, noticing the impact in the body, in the leg. All right, and let's heel toe the feet out, mat distance apart, and roll through the feet, toe to heel. And see if you can really push the limits of that. So um, coming all the way back onto the heel and all the way forward up onto the toes, maybe that's not your range of motion, but if you are able to try and come to the furthest edges of the feet. Being safe about the knees, so not allowing them to cave in or lock, but still, you know, having that freedom to explore your body here. And then we will again, turn the toes out. So in this wider position, Rolling from heel to toe. Lengthen the neck, lengthen the spine, draw the shoulder blades together. So if you look at me, I'm not completely folded over, but you can, if there's space in your body, if there's space in your muscles, you can completely fold and do this, but you don't have to is what I'm saying. So if you're doing this with a chair right at halfway, that 
works too. Rolling from toe to heel. And then turn the outside edge of the feet out one more. So if this is wide enough for a wide-legged forward fold, leave it here or take it out a little bit wider and then surrender over nice big forward fold. Find your breath. And in our wide-legged forward folds, I'm going to turn to face you guys. In our wide-legged forward folds, we will start to explore the edges of our feet once again. So let's come up onto the toes and slowly roll back onto the heels. When I say roll back, that could just be shifting weight. So it doesn't have to be fully coming up on the toes and fully rolling back on the heels. It can be shifting weight to the toes and shifting weight to the heels. Moving through the feet. All right, and then we'll start to ground the outside edges and inside edges. So pulling from outside edge of the foot to inside edge of the foot. Maybe you're fully surrendered into the score of hold. Maybe you have that block or chair that's supporting you. Moving through these feet. Two more. And then start to turn the heels in. Ground all four corners of both feet. Press your hips forward, come up through goddess. Arms to your sides, palms facing forward. So I think probably everyone who's here has done this with me before, but I'm gonna break it down for you um, because that's what we're doing here. So you're going to roll through the right foot to the right heel. Send the right arm out long, roll through the right foot to the toe, and straighten the left leg. So this is a slow and meditative movement. You also want to make sure that you are on floor that is gripping and not slipping. Roll through the feet, find this movement. At the same time, we are lifting our belly button up toward the ribs. This is that is no good. All right. <laughs> and your feet don't have to be super far apart to get the most out of this. We just want to find that movement, find that balance. Finding that stability from the hips. And you can move even slower than me. This can be very, very, very slow. Keeping your feet firmly planted on the earth at all times. So when you come up onto the heel, there's still a foot on the earth there. And we have two more on each side. Coming back into goddess. Roll up onto the right toes and lower the right heel. Roll up onto the left toes and lower the heel. Sink all the way down, outside edges of the feet in line with the outside edge of the mat. 
wide-legged forward fold. So this could be regarded as your resting posture. Grounding all four corners of the feet, releasing the head, neck, and shoulders. Release the wrists. Maybe you wingle, wingle, <laughs> wiggle the fingers again. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Begin to walk your fingertips over toward the left foot. Pivot on the feet. So both feet pivot so that the um, toes are pointing forward. The front leg is straight. Come up onto the back toes. So if the front leg cannot be straight the way you are, step your back foot up slightly. Hip, hip, feet are hip distance apart in terms of width. Breathing into the back of the leg. We'll begin to roll up onto the heel of the left foot. And then roll back to the toes, shift the hips back, lower the right heel. So the right heel is reaching for the ground, but it does not have to be anywhere near the ground. We're going to do that two more times. Roll back, flexing the toes back toward the face, lifting the kneecaps. Again, maybe you use blocks or um, books to bring the ground up to you. And then roll through the foot, drop the toes, shift the hips back, straight left leg. One more time, we roll through the foot, turning the toes back toward the face. And then drop the toes back toward the earth. Finding that stretch. Bend into the front knee, drop the back knee, come to the top of the back foot. Left or sorry, both hands, not just the left one, both hands come to the top of the left thigh. Lift and lengthen the spine, lift up out of the hips, find your lunge. Start to press into the top of the back foot. This may be enough for you, or maybe you lift the back knee up off. Find a long spine, lower the back knee, tuck the back toes under, fingertips to the earth, lengthen the spine, breathing into the top of the right thigh. Lift the back knee. And step the back foot up to meet the front foot. Forward fold. Let's take a nice big inhale, come all the way up to standing. And exhale the hands to heart center. Yes, yes, yes. Take a big step back into a goddess position. Bend the knees, rotate the inner thighs outward, arms and elbows in line with the shoulders, palms facing forward. Come up onto the left toes and lower. Come up onto the right toes and lower. Come up on both toes if you can or continue to alternate. Lifting the belly, pressing the hips forward, breathing, lower down onto the heels, 
rotate the outside edges of the feet in line with the outside edges of the mat. Wide legged forward pull. Yes, yes, yes. This is your resting posture. So letting your hands and wrists move around. Letting your head, neck, and shoulders relax. Two more rounds of breath. And then begin to walk your hands toward the right foot, turning the right toes toward the short edge of the mat, pivoting on the back foot. We come right into this high pyramid, using blocks, using books to bring the ground up to you if that um, is what's needed. Everyone has different proportions. Everyone needs something different. So we're straightening the front leg, not allowing that knee to move in. Lift that kneecap, drawing the right hip back. And then begin to roll onto the right heel. If shaking occurs, which um, it always does for me, so if it doesn't for you, Congratulations. <laughs> um, but if shaking occurs, just breathing through that, seeing if you can find that space beyond the shake. Pass through that door, pass through that threshold. And then lowering the toes, drawing the right hip back, feeling that stretch. We're trying to keep the spine as long as possible here, drawing the shoulder blades toward one another. And then roll back onto the heel, flex the toes back toward the face. Roll back to the toes. And that back foot, you can come up onto the toes and you can lower the heel, um, depending on what you need there. Roll back on the heel one last time, flexing the toes back toward the face, breathing into the stretch. Drop the toes down to the earth. Draw that right hip back. And then begin to bend the front knee, dropping the back knee, come to the top of the back foot. Both hands to the right thigh. And again, maybe you just stay here, pressing into the top of the back foot and feeling that engagement. Or maybe you join me, in hell <laughs> and lift the left knee up off the floor. If you can. Maybe not. <laughs> Straighten the spine. And release. Fingertips to the earth, tuck the back toes under, lengthen the spine. So what that means is if we're collapsing onto our thighs, sometimes we need to just make a space and lengthen there. And we'll feel this at the top of the left thigh. Lift the back knee, coming into runner's lunge. Bring up the back foot up to meet the front foot. Forward pull. Enjoy this forward pull. This is also a good opportunity to take a drink. But really, it's an opportunity to feel and connect to the work that you've already done. 
in your legs, in your body, in your feet. As we start to bring ourselves up to standing. And exhale the hands to heart center. So we're going to take some time here in standing mountain pose to really build our mountain pose. And we'll start by drawing circles around the edges of the feet. So toes, outside edge, inside edge, around and around we go. Round, round, one way. And then we'll reverse and go the other way. And start to bring those circles in toward the arches of the feet and toward the center. Standing nice and firm, drawing the arches of the feet up. Arms to your sides, palms facing forward, stacking the bones in the body, feeling nice and straight and tall and powerful. I trust myself. I trust myself. Feet firmly planted on the earth. I trust myself. Draw the left knee into the chest. Rotate the ankle. One way. So there will be one way that feels natural, and then you'll rotate it the other way. Turn out at the hip, foot comes to the thigh, to the shin, or to, or sorry, to the calf, or to the ankle, or maybe your big toe is to the floor. Hands like magnets attracted, heart center. And we're finding a point of focus. If you need the wall, just make sure that the wall is here, your fingertips to the wall, and that you are still upright and not leaning in one way or another. My shadow on the wall looks like I'm trying to be a bear. Claw hands. All right. And this powerful earth energy surges up through the foot, growing like vines around the feet, the ankles, the calves and shins, knees, thighs, all the way up to the hips. Finding peace and stillness here. If you wish to grow your tree, doing that now. This is also another opportunity to work out the wrist or the finger. Lifting the belly, pressing the hips forward, lifting up out of that group. Release your hands back to heart center. 
left foot comes to the earth, shake out the right foot. And we're going to draw those circles again around the edges of the feet, but this time we're going to go um, counterclockwise first. So if you went clockwise the first time, doing the opposite direction around the edges of the feet. And again, maybe edges of the feet come up off the earth and maybe they don't. Maybe this is just exploring the edges and switch directions. And those circles become a spiral in toward center, in toward the arch of the foot. And you maybe in your mind's eye, you see pillars at the arches of the foot and you're drawing that circle around, bringing it into center turning out at the right hip, foot to the calf, the thigh, or to the ankle. I am currently working on my lower abdomen fitness and um, various things in my lower back. So I'm keeping my foot at my ankle um, because that's where it needs to be. So it's not about advanced or you know, what I can do, it's about where it should be. So maybe exploring that anywhere but the knee, hands like magnets attracted, heart center, that pillar of energy from the arch is running all the way up the body to the crown. Reminiscent of the lines that we drew at the beginning of our practice in our meditation. Drawing that line from crown to root to arch of the foot. And the pace of an earthy practice can be something that is hard to get used to. Um, particularly if you're used to a fiery practice. But it's worthwhile to, to slow down and to, to really find that foundation. You can start to bring the arms up toward the sky, exploring your tree branches. Maybe this is just an opportunity to absorb some nutrients, maybe some intention up through or from the fingertips, in through the fingertips, extending it down to the roots, sending it down to the sole of the foot. The channels work both ways. Fall out, come back. Start to draw the hands back to heart center. Hug the right knee into the chest, rotate the ankle one way, and then the other. And release. Shake out the left foot. Shake out both feet, keeping one after the other. And then come to the bottom of your mat. Heels aligned with the bottom of your mat, feet hip distance apart. 
and we'll perform a walking meditation as our last standing posture. Looking at where the wall and the floor meet. Step your right foot forward, just align with the tip of your left big toe. Roll through the right foot, heel to toe. And feeling that roll up in the left foot and then placing the left foot. Rolling up through the right foot. Feel every movement from heel to toe in both feet. If you have reached the top of your mat already, you went too fast. Come back. This should take a decent amount of time. You want to feel that full movement. And once you have reached the top of your mat, turn around and walk back. Heel to toe through the feet, walking, becoming so, so, so aware of our feet. And here's a little anxiety hack for you that I wish I used for myself. Is that if you practice this when you're freaking out, you will calm down. And I'm hearing for <laughs> you guys are nurturers, so you're more likely to use this for other people than for yourself, but at least it's a little tip, something to think about. All right, so we are now at the bottom of our mat. Inhale the arms up, facing the mat, exhale, fold. Walk the hands out to down dog. And move through the feet, heel to toe. Drop, come up onto the toes. Shift forward, drop the knees to the earth, walk your palms out, keep the toes tucked under, sink your chest down toward the earth or two blocks. You can place a block underneath to catch your chest or your chin. And then we'll press forward onto, so remove the block, press forward onto your belly. And on your belly, you can use a folded blanket to remove, remove the curve from your spine. Um, I don't have one with me, but you would just fold a blanket and put it around the area of the hips. Arms come into cactus position. And we'll start with the left knee out to the side. Looking toward the left arm. So onto the right ear. Rest here and send the right arm down the right side, palm facing up. Close your eyes and rest. Bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. The air above the soles of your feet. I trust myself. I trust myself. Maybe you use this time to reflect on structures or systems 
that you use to try and reinforce you as a false sense of stability. A scaffolding, if you will. For instance, facts <laughs> or knowledge or protocol or tradition. other people's opinion. What have I been using to hold myself up? It doesn't come from myself. And we'll send the left leg out long. Bend the right elbow, bring your arms back into that cactus position. The right leg comes out to the side, knee bent. Turn onto your left here and send your left arm alongside the body, palm face up. Why don't I trust myself? Why don't I trust myself? Have I made mistakes others haven't? I do trust myself. I do trust myself. What structures and foundations have I built for myself? Bring the right leg long, arms to your sides, palms face up, rest onto your right ear. Those big toes together, let the heels come wide. Let the lower back open and you rest here, absorbing this beautiful earth energy into your body. Thank you. 
And here you feel these anchor points coming from the joints, from the shoulders and the elbows and the wrists and all the little joints in the fingers, the toes, the ankles, the knees and the hips. From each joint grows a root, a root like a bone, a foundational and fundamental connection. To the treasury history of your physical self of the earth. Being at peace with this connection, not needing it to be anything other than what it is. Breathe and relax your body. In the East, I am the spirit of healing. I present ways of alleviating the many factors that cause sickness in both body and mind. If you are suffering, stand with me. With my help, you may grow strong again and throw off the darkness that has overshadowed your life. I will hold your wounded spirit gently in my hands and breathe upon it with the breath of healing. Restored, your spirit will return to your body, filled with strength and purpose. In the South, the hunter of abundance. I am the hunter of abundance. Wherever I go, I forage for the richest store of good things, the utmost bounty that will encourage stability, strength, growth, and comfort within you. When I find these things, I bring them home to bestow upon you who have asked me to seek them out. My presence on your journey represents a fulfillment of purpose and overflowing of fruitfulness and riches of spirit, heart, and mind. In the West, I am the hunter of death. I seek the change that comes with new directions and new possibilities. I am not one who breaks or destroys but one who builds and restores. I will help you to climb beyond the stasis of everyday life and into the place where all potential awaits you. I am death only to dullness and routine. And when you choose me to walk with, I can show you inspiring ways of changing your old life for a new one. And in the north, the ancestor of tribes. I am the ancestor of tribes. I come to you in times of need to offer the collective support of the tribe. I may come as a friend, as a family member, 
or as a stranger who extends a helping hand. No matter what your goal or what stage you have reached on your journey, I am there to bring the strength of many to bolster and support you. Look for me in times of greatest trouble and acknowledge my presence in whatever form it comes. And so feeling the support to the east of you, drawing your awareness of the east inward through the spirit of healing and feeling into the south, the warmth of the hunter of abundance drawing close to you. inward and inward to the west and the hunter of death. It's transformational energy drawing inward and inward closer to your body, to your skin and feeling the north drawing toward you the ancestor of tribes. And at the center is you. The directions expressing themselves through you. Your physical and material body of vessel The foundation is you. I am the foundation. I am the center that holds all directions of truth. And with each step, a memory, an echo, moving forwards and backwards through time. Each step I take in the present is a reflection of what is past. And a, a possibility of what is to come. I am present, I trust, I am the foundation. Making your way over onto your back, slowly and gently staying low to the ground. Let your arms come out to your sides, palms face up, feet fall open. And so whether you came here for a piece of initiation to retrieve a last hope, to connect with the divine masculine or to find some clarity 
May what you have released in your feet travel upward, an upward current of energy that illuminates the mind. A new wave of communication running from the feet. The mind intelligence. Take this time in Shavasana to allow this current to run through you. Take a moment to be grateful for something today, whatever you're grateful for. Allow that to rise up, to travel with the pulse and with the breath. Thank you so much for sharing in this practice with me tonight. I appreciate you so very much, always. Have a good night.